Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A surfer has escaped from the jaws of what is thought to be a great white shark in the water near Ballina. The young man is now in a stable condition. 17-year-old Cooper Allen was surfing with mates off popular Lighthouse Beach just after nine this morning. A shark approached from behind his board and lunged, latching onto Cooper's right thigh. The teen suffered major lacerations, which narrowly missed a main artery. I'm still sick in the stomach. The top jaw came across the surfer's leg and left uh, three or four very large uh, uh, lacerations across the leg. Cooper's friends dragged him to safety, keeping him calm until paramedics arrived. Cooper is reportedly in good spirits, even joking with paramedics not to tell his mum. All in all, considering what he'd been through, he was, he was very, very good. Search helicopters spotted a three and a half metre great white not far from the attack scene. Most beaches in the area have now been closed. Lifeguards are advising people to stay out of the water. Patrick Goddard, QT News. The New South Wales flood crisis is worsening. The state premier is inspecting the damage at Forbes, northwest of Sydney. Overnight, more than 100 homes were affected by the flooding as the Lachlan River peaked. And more wet weather forecast later for this week could cause river levels to rise again. Families and farmers are devastated by the biggest flood in Forbes history. But they've been warned, the worst is yet to come. And they're going to face some challenges later this week when it comes to resupply or even sustaining being able to stay in their home over a protracted period as we look at a, another wave of rain and uh, downstream effects. Lachlan River peaked at 10.67 metres on Sunday night. It passed the previous high in August 1990 when 132 properties were inundated. This time, more than a thousand people have been rescued or displaced. SES volunteers have traveled to Forbes from all over the state. The record-breaking floods also ravaged what was expected to be the region's best harvest in years, and crop and stock losses could be high. Authorities continue to assess the impact of the floods, but they'll have to wait until the water recedes, which could take weeks. It may take some time too before residents are able to return home, if there is anything left for them to return to. Jake Ten, QUT News. The Palaszczuk government has defended its review of the foster care system. There have been calls for the child safety minister to resign in the wake of problems raised after the alleged murder of a Logan schoolgirl. A review into Queensland's child safety mechanisms sparked by the Tiali Palmer murder case comes as police continue to dig up the backyard of her accused murderer. The review panel is made up of these four prominent child safety authorities, including those representing foster care non-government organisations. It will add to the findings of the 2012 Carmody Review. If this review adds to the body of knowledge, if it adds to the accountability and transparency, if it improves services, so be it. But if it's a distraction from those that have already been commenced, then it will be a massive problem. The search for more clues in this foster care murder case continues. Police used an excavator for the six days, scouring through the chamber's flat property. Meanwhile, the opposition has had a dig of their own, calling for the child safety minister's resignation. I think the minister has had ample opportunity to step up and protect the children of Queensland, and she has failed to do so, and she needs to go. But on ABC Radio this morning, Child Safety Minister Shannon Fentiman stood her ground. I'm not going to resign and in fact calls uh, for my resignation are only coming from the LNP. She is confident in the recommendations that will be put forward by the expert panel. Jacob Miley, QUT News. New technology will allow police to enforce the one metre between cyclists and motorists. Advocates say the new law is making Queensland roads safer. A new device that allows police to measure the most conscientious distance in Australian road safety, the space between bicycles and overtaking motorists, is being developed. Police riding bikes would use ultrasonic sensors to calculate how close vehicles come. Targeting hotspot areas, it will allow them to enforce laws banning motorists from coming within one metre of cyclists. I guess it sends out the signal to, to, to motorists that we are 
committed to cyclist safety. The decision comes as more and more cyclists are concerned about their space on the roads. I feel like cars do not give right away to pedestrians or cyclists and I just feel like I have to be a lot more defensive when I'm cycling. Advocacy groups say that it's an improvement but there are several more safety measures which should be put in place. We really need to start looking at the infrastructure that we have and how that makes people feel safer. She also wants physical barriers wider lanes and consequences for those breaking the rules. If people are doing the wrong thing, then they can expect to get caught out, and I think that's a good thing. Advocate groups say that at the end of the day, any steps taken to improve the safety of cyclists on our roads are a step in the right direction and will hopefully reduce the need for memorials like these. Dominic Shamillan, QUT News. And a new push today for motorists to change to cleaner, greener fuel and a V8 champion is the public face of the state government's pitch. V8 supercar champion Mark Winterbottom helped launch the new biofuels education campaign E10 OK. In the 10 years since E10 petrol was introduced in Queensland, it has evolved. Today, it's better designed and more and more car engines are built to run on it. Biofuels Minister Mark Bailey says E10 is good for the state. To boost uh, the uh, sales of uh, ethanol and biodiesel uh, by more than 100% uh, to grow Queensland jobs. Part of the campaign is an interactive website. Motorists can search their vehicle registration or make a model to see if their vehicle is compatible with the fuel. As the Palaszczuk government is transitioning Queensland into a clean economy, there are still many engines such as outboard motors that would fail if filled with E10. The RACQ says even though 85% of vehicles can use E10, it's best to check first. There's a lot of engines that, that still need to use unleaded, older cars obviously, motor mowers and, and outboards and, and the like. From January 2017, more fuel stations will be required to have ethanol blended petrol and bio-based diesel, giving motorists better access to cleaner sources of fuel. Alex Igo, QUT News. Changes to aviation laws this week will open up the skies to an increasing number of people legally allowed to fly drones. Although the changes are being welcomed by some, many industry experts fear it will open the floodgates to unsafe practices. Drones are rapidly growing in popularity. Up until now, pilots needed an official CASA licence to operate them. From Thursday, anyone will be permitted to operate unmanned aerial vehicles weighing under 2 kilograms without a licence. It opens up a new market for the sale of aerial footage. But operators must notify CASA before flying their UAVs, which can't be flown higher than 120 metres or within 5.5 kilometres of airports. They must be flown during daylight hours and within line of sight, and at least 30 metres away from the public. The changes have raised some concerns. The red tape is there for a reason, especially in terms of air safety. And once we remove those defence barriers, then the probability of an accident occurring is, is higher. But a warning, as well as the new regulations, other restrictions may apply. Like Christmas City Council, for example, won't allow you to fly these, these uh, devices in any of their parks. So they, you know, there's a public liability issue and they prefer to have to come and join a club like ours. Although the new regulations will have the largest impact on owners of UAVs under two kilograms such as this one, other beneficiaries will be rural producers who will be permitted to operate UAVs up to 25 kilograms to inspect stock and produce on their properties. And now specially equipped drones are helping save lives. Louis Jennings, QUT News. It's that time of the year again when the AFL's finest and most glamorous take to the red carpet. Tonight, all eyes are on the man wearing navy and white, number 13. It's nothing short of astonishing. No, but he will get the crumb over the shoulder. Dangerfield in space. Hooks a goal. Patrick Dangerfield, the man punters are tipping to take out tonight's Brownlow medal, has earned every point. Geelong's devastating loss to the Sydney Swans sent shockwaves through the AFL community taking away their chance at a grand final win. The Swans take on the Western Bulldogs. They face an uphill battle after losing their past two clashes. Adding insult to injury, three of the Swans' top players were sidelined due to injury. When he went down, he thought to himself, I've done something serious for you. So. Aliyah Aliyah, Jared McVeigh and Callum Mills all suffered leg injuries. To do yesterday, they won't be training uh, at this session today, but uh, they did what they had to do yesterday and um, we'll know a bit more again on Wednesday. 
But it was all about Brownlow points tonight, the tallies being transported to Melbourne's Crown Palladium under lock and key. It'll be one of the biggest shocks in Brownlow history if Dangerfield doesn't win outright. Cats captain Joel Selwood and Dangerfield have been so prominent they're nicknamed Dangerwood. Other contenders include Western Bulldogs Marcus Bontempelli and Hawthorne's perennial contender Sam Mitchell. Gabriel Martini, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. It was hot and sunny around the southeast today, with the UV index in some parts reaching extreme. Checking the temperatures, Brisbane, the Gold and Sunny Coast reached the high 20s, while Ipswich dropped to 9 degrees overnight. Around the nation tomorrow, and a top of 17 for Melbourne, Adelaide and Hobart. Sydney, a maximum of 22. Possible showers in Canberra with a minimum of 3 degrees. 12 to 19 degrees in Perth and a hot day in Darwin reaching a max of 35. The forecast for Queensland and low 30s across Mount Isa, Cairns and Townsville. A top of 29 in Mackay and Rocky. 28 in Bundaberg with possible showers in Longreach dropping to 13 overnight. The outlook for Brisbane. Mostly sunny with tops in the high 20s. Expect showers on a Thursday with a chance of a thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We're back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.